in the six jersey to bring the game to the opposition. A fascinating contradiction in styles coming up for us here, Philippa. Yeah, really interesting, you know. Uh, again, we're going to see with Japan a little bit similar to China. Very drilled, lots of good communication between them. They're very connected in defense stark contrast Kenya at times they almost look like an invitational team like they're a bunch of great players that have been brought together for one tournament because sometimes they go a bit rogue they do their own thing they cause chaos in defense but it works for them they've really been going through quite a transition since we've seen them last and I'm loving the style of play they play with a lot of freedom every individual has the right to back themselves and in defense look out for the shots they put in they are rogue they are ruthless Okay. Huddled tight, decked in the traditional black and red of Kenya. Build us a surprise package, or have we just been witnessing a well camouflage pride of lionesses laying in wait for their challenger series prey all along? Japan will be looking to channel the vibes of 2017 when they beat South okay. Africa to qualify as a core nation on the World Series. Both these sides are a game away from that golden game. Good contest from the lineup, but it's Kenya who come away through big Lorino Tieno. Isolated and Japan are away, looking to move fast. Nice bit of footwork. Draws two defenders. Japan. Good accurate passing and that's good strength work in the fen. You'd expect better tackling from the Kenyans. They continue to probe narrow. Kenyans being asked to work. Well, that's a line, isn't it? from Fumiko Otake and all that heavy work, nice and narrow, open things up for Michuyo Suda. Japan have the first score. Lovely bit of composed play there from Japan, just ball carry, retaining possession, go again, go again, but you, you mentioned it there in the commentary, the tackling, that was really poor from Kenya, especially the standards that they've set themselves so far in this tournament. They're just falling off players. Maybe that's a bit of nerves, you know, what's at stake. But they need to shake that out, get back to the aggressive tackling that we've seen so far in this tournament. Otherwise, Japan are going to run away with this. Well, that is a conversion and a half as well to maximize the try scoring effort from Suda. An individual kicking now who has been growing in terms of importance for this Japanese team all weekend increasingly prevalent in everything good that they do but here's the athleticism here's the pace here's the power and here is the equalizing try from Janet Akalo well, you mentioned her before, didn't you? She's been a try-scoring machine for Kenya, and that is what we've become accustomed to seeing. Strong ball carrying, strong fens backing themselves on the edge. This is going to be a tight one. Uh, Janet Akalo, I saw her for the first time playing in the tournaments in Spain around the COVID era, the Madrid Sevens, bit of an unknown quantity, and she lit it up against some of the best usa france russia they were all there and they struggled to contain her and you see right there the japanese are going to have their hands full if they're going to keep their line safe when she's on the ball yeah she is such a running threat isn't she she's got that confidence no fear backs herself it's brilliant is that the shot in the arm that the lionesses need a little bit fractured in their press on the Japanese backs and creates a couple of dog legs which the, the Japanese gobble up a few more meters well there's an injury here yeah it was some um, one of the Japanese players on the restart 
down, grabbing, uh, holding her shoulder. So medical attention's just coming on now. Ah, here we see that try scoring run. Incredibly powerful. Such, it, we're seeing now this development, these longer, taller athletes that are still so powerful and compact. But if you've got that long range fend, it is just such a weapon now in sevens. Well, Janet Akalo is a shining example of where this game can take you. We talk about the impact that qualifying for the World Series can have on the development of the game for the nation, but for the personal players, her performance out at the Olympics, she's playing her rugby in Tokyo now, Janet Akalo. And I'll tell you what, those in Yokashai City will be pretty eager to get her back from Chile <laughs> when they're probably watching at home and seeing her do the business out here in Santiago. Long way to go in this semi-final. Japan leading by two points. This collision of precision and physicality of these two sides. Take has looked to lose it every time she's got the ball, but loses it in contact. And we've already seen Kenya probe down this left side, but inaccuracy at the breakdown. Another let off for the Japanese. Suda, the try scorer, beautiful sleight of hand. This is the opportunity. There's numbers, there's space, there's the pace of Hara. Will she be caught? She isn't. Well, you can't be sure she got that down clearly. I think we're going to go upstairs. There's not touch. I've seen a good grounding. Oof. And, uh, you know, Janet Kello there, she chased back so well and got that turn. So what she's trying to do there is, is turn the player to keep the ball from grounding. Let's see this chase back now. Look, she twists her, but yeah, there you go. Really good awareness. She gets that reverse ground. Watch the kick. It just grazed the blade of grass with the tip of the ball, didn't she? But yeah. that's enough downward pressure. Another lovely strike from Suda. Doesn't find the direction on this occasion. Really oh. good. Backs herself. Look, hand free, ready for that fend if needed. Well, already we're seeing the key player step up. Or Kabahara right there for Japan. Janet Akalo for Kenya. Big occasions. Call for big names to step up. Oh, she could be in trouble here. No, penalty only, grabbing of the hair. Wow, it's uh, not the first time we've seen that. And of course, we saw it a little bit in the Commonwealth Games as well. A few headline grabbing hair pulls. But again, that looks like Cotieno getting isolated just sinking to the floor a little bit too quickly and not giving her teammates a chance to help her. Japan could have done with another pass to get outside that final defender and as it is, they get turnover. Neither side cherishing possession a great deal at the moment. Kenya so comfortable striking from deep. But really, a messy passage of play for both sides comes to a conclusion. Yeah, a bit of half-heartedness there. You could see players undecisive. Did they want to go on the outside? Should they cut back in? And then, you know what, if, you, if you're going to cut back in for contact, you've got to be 100%. And you could see the players, they were looking around for the offload before they'd won the collision. Win the collision first, get your hands free, then go for the offload. Final play of this half. Japan looking for their third try of the semi-final. They give it to their last try scorer who shows a clean set of heels. You don't give Wakabahara that much room on the edge. Thumbs up from Hara, two tries to her name and Japan burnishing their lead heading into the halftime huddles. No, I've been so impressed 
with Wakahara. She has grown so much in this tournament. In the early exchanges, in the early games, she was just kind of the last uh, player to receive the ball, and she'd run in a couple of easy ones. But as the tournaments progressed, my day, she's created something out of nothing with these. Lovely little in and out, backs herself on that outside edge. Brilliant work. So the tries of Hara, the difference, just outstripping Naomi Amungi. With the clock in the red in the first half. It's been a bitty one, maybe not quite of the quality and the intensity that we saw in our previous thriller between Poland and China. But that scoreline right there, 17-5 tells you that it is still very much all to play for in this second half as both Japan and Kenya seek a final berth and a final chance to qualify as a core nation on the HSBC World Rugby 7 Series here in Santiago. Well, a lot of calmness in there at the moment. One thing that's been said about the Japanese team, one thing that's been remarked and complimented is their fitness. They are fit, they go and go, they are relentless. Do you see that being a factor in this second half? Yeah, it really could, although I don't think we've seen the, the best out of Kenya. You know, they haven't been running things in, they haven't had a long defensive set, so I don't think it's been as fatiguing as it could have been through that first half. But if... Japan can keep up the intensity, move them a bit more. You know, it's, it's, you can see the Kenyans are bigger players, so that's what you want to try and do and, and try and make fitness an element of it. Well, just remember that at the Tokyo Olympics, Kenya finished 10th and Japan finished 12th. Mm -hmm. So the Lionesses will have belief. Japan! I think it was a massive disappointment for Japan, though. You know, I think that's part of what we're seeing here is, is that element of trying to make up for it. Seven minutes away from the final, Japan are a big seven minutes for Kenya. And a bit unlucky there, really, to knock the ball on. Looked like they might have salvaged the kickoff. Yeah, when you're down by those points and you've got the restart, you've got to be thinking this is the one we've got to score from. We've got to apply pressure. Oh, so frustrating. Well, went backwards between her legs, but cool was a knock on. I think we're fine. Crouch. Bind. Cat Roach. The woman in the middle with the whistle. And Japan looking to strike from their 22. Looked maybe a little high with the player falling. You hit the ground. Definitely, definitely not a legal way in which to strip the ball on the floor. Kenya have got to be careful of their discipline. They can't get too desperate. They've got time. Six minutes on the clock. We've already seen throughout this Challenger series as he's taking another look at that shot from Amungi. Yeah, high shot and she was tackle assist, so she needs to give a clear release before she goes back in on that ball. Yume Hirano feeds from the base. Nice movement from the Japanese back line. That's a loose hand, and it's not going to help the Kenyan court. It looks like it's Janet Akelo as well. That's not a woman you want going off the field when you're chasing a game. And this is the difference we're seeing in that last game, how Poland reacted to being down. They were squeaky clean. They were concise. They brought tempo. Kenya have tried to bring tempo and there's been an error. They've tried to bring tempo and another error. They're just piling pressure back on themselves. Playing now with six, big ask. Well, they spoil what should have been clean ball for the Japanese from the scrum. Oh, and it's picked up. Otiano, keep going, Otiano, you're nearly there. A flop across the line and a lurch back into this semi-final. Down to six, backs against the wall, but Otieno, she comes up with a big play to bring Kenya right back into it. Oh, that was brave. That was very brave. You've just seen your teammate being sent off and trying to go for an intercept, and you back yourself. But you know what? At 17-10, four minutes to go, it's do or die. She backed herself, and she's got the team back in. 
decent effort on the conversion. It's a one score game. Looking around left and right, who's on the back? It's all right, you're home and hose, Lorene. Big try. Just enough to plant a seed of doubt in the Japanese minds as well. Their passing has been really spot on. Wow, she made such a brilliant effort to get away, didn't she? Still penalised. Not back 10, lucky yeah. to not get a yellow card, maybe. Mm. Scrum. And it's interesting, Japan going for the scrum. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what's the tactic here? Because you'd think that they'd want to drive tempo, move the six of Kenya around, but they've been going for scrum after scrum after scrum. Yeah, you know what? Technically, they back themselves in the scrum, and they are very good. You watch their body positioning, how tight they are as a three, so even though they're going against physically bigger players, they'll back themselves to get the ball back. Kenya back up to seven now. It's winding down the clock a little bit, but when Kenya were down a player, why do you want to wind down the clock? You've got to use that time. Standing up, standing up, back ten, back ten. There you go, they're backing their technical ability against Kenya's. Let's have the kick. I mean, the Japanese are as calm as one of their water gardens out there at the moment. There is just utter composure in the manner in which they're approaching this semi-final, which while they lead, they only lead by seven. And we've already seen the Kenya, through a blend of opportunism and athleticism, do have the ability to score from anywhere. And if that fumble into the arms of Stella Nalima had stuck, they could have been chasing Kenyan shadows again. Oh, it's close, isn't it? So close. Still, they've got the ball now from the scrum. Kenya starved of the ball, starved of quality ball in attack. Finally, they get to go on the strike. A little show not given to the runner from Akumu. But fortunately, Amungi's there on the shoulder. Nice recycle from Kenya, looking to build something. Running sideways, finding the pass. Otieno over the top, Akalo. Big Fen coming out with the left ball. She swats away. Wakaba Hara, wow. Janet Akalo from Yellow Card Villain to potentially semi final equalizer. Well, I wouldn't really call that textbook passing, but they got the ball from A to B. They got it where it needed to go. And it just outplayed the defense there. Japan did everything right. They came up high, but you come up high, you've got to bite on that tackle. They stood off just for a split second, allowing players just to flip the ball over the edge. And crucially, the conversion is missed. And there's that big fend again. One minute. Oh, this is tight. 50 seconds on the clock, two points in the game. The final awaiting whoever can come out on top of this fascinating contest between Japan, between Kenya. Oh, is that the pass that is going to break the Lioness's heart? A handful of jersey is just about enough. No. Kenya. Advantage. Kenya scrambling. Japan. The Barbarians at the gates banging at the door. Can they find the try to seal that final berth? Well, Hara's across the line. Did she get it down? Try awarded a hat trick for the flyer in the 11 jersey. That's the game, that's the semi final. And Japan have a date with Poland in the final here in Santiago. Wow, but how amazing though. It's just testament to the quality of teams now that are knocking on the door, demanding core status in that World Series, that we have such tight exchanges like this. I do think it's the rightful winners. Japan, they definitely came into this with more of a, a process of how to play sevens. They kept their cool even where Kenya shot them, came back at them.
But gosh, Kenya, they play some exciting sevens. Really good to see them progress and hopefully they progress further. But well done, Japan. Congratulations to Japan. Taken to the wire by the Lionesses who have won a lot of fans out in Santiago this way weekend across the world for everybody tuning in their determination the joy with which they played this game and they were so so close to finding themselves in the final but as it is it's the former core nation seeking to regain a place at the top table it will be Japan versus Poland in the cup final with China and Kenya battling it out for bronze later.